So we're just out for an early spring walk down by the river. I've brought you here quite a few times before, but we're just actually just gonna have a look. Yeah, look at this. This is the Ramsons wild garlic and it's up already. And look at those lovely fresh green leaves. Now, if you know how to identify this plant reliably, this is definitely the best time of year to pick it. When these leaves are still young and fresh like this, you can just chop them up whole in salads or chop them up into an omelette. They're very mild when they're cooked. They've got a strong garlic aroma when they're fresh, but once they're cooked, they turn really nice and mild and oniony. And over here, we've got some stinging nettles as well. Just starting to show some green shoots there. So it won't be long before we can pick some stinging nettles and make nettle soup. But this stuff looks fantastic, doesn't it? I think we'll be picking some of this soon. Over there, that's the log where I picked the chicken of the woods fungus back in the autumn. Now somebody sliced that log up. I don't know whether they've taken a chunk of that to try to cultivate the fungus in their own property or whether somebody's just chopping that up for firewood or for carpentry. Not really sure. I mean, it's a big old bit of chestnut. Somebody may have chopped that up to do some wood turning or it might just be somebody's after free firewood. There you go, there are some chunks of chunks of chestnut there. That chunk in front there is just about too big for me to move. It's possible I could cart that off and move it back home and pick chicken of the woods in my own garden. Although, to be honest, it's not worth it. It's better to get out and find it in the wild and enjoy a bit of the fresh air that you have to get while you're out looking for it. Okay, now I've spoken about these before. These are my invention dice, and I created these really just as a bit of fun, but also as a little creative game that you can play. You roll them, and you get a suggestion for something you have to invent. And so you just have to come up with an idea that fits that. So in this case, a random solar-powered metal family tool, a mini size one. Or we could have... Uh, an office, a stealth, organic, wearable, solar art. No idea what that would be, but the point of this is to stimulate ideas. It's just really to stretch your brain and see if you can create an idea that fits this. Exercise your brain. You can use it for creating actual inventions, but mostly it's just a bit of fun and mental exercise. The idea draws inspiration from a couple of places. One of them was Rory Story Cubes, which I love. And these are dice where you roll a set of dice and then you have to basically narrate a story that fits all of the little pictures you've got on the dice. And this is lots of fun. And it's a really kind of open-ended game. You can play with children or with family. Actually, anyone, any age can play this. You just, because you just make it up as you go along. It's a lot of fun. There's no wrong answers. But also this guy, Edward de Bono. So... I've long been a fan of Edward de Bono's thinking tools and techniques. And a couple of the things he's often said in his thinking techniques is all about inject a bit of randomness into your processes and try to accommodate a bit of randomness or take something away and replace it with something random and then force yourself to think of a new way of, of solving a problem with a random element in it or with a randomly replaced element in it. So yeah, a bit of inspiration from here, a bit of inspiration from there and a bit of ideas of my own. But anyway, so the invention dice came about. But that's not what we're talking about today. So I already have a video about these on my channel and someone commented on that video to say, hey, I'm going to make this into an app. So yeah, this is the video and let's have a look in the comments down here. So yeah, this guy, Food Dog Squared, has actually made an app based on this idea. So um, kind of cool. And I was thrilled to hear about that. So, and I said, yeah, actually what you could do is have an app where you can do recipe dice and all kinds of other things. And he actually already had that in mind. And so he's actually made these virtual idea dice. Let's take a look. And here it is. He's been, he's been very kind to give me credit for this idea, actually, so I feel it's only right to give credit to the people and places where I got my inspiration as well. So anyway, we've got the facility to make your own set of dice here or just use the standard set. Now, let's have a look. We can actually go to the app here 
and we can just use the original set. Now obviously it's not a graphical set of dice but we can just generate idea. There we go. So we've got actually a we've got a random set of dice we can roll and this app works on PCs and on smartphones and so you can just roll a set of dice here. Now it doesn't as I say have little pictures that we've got on the actual dice but the point is the ideas are there so you can still use this and as I say you can add more dice so if you want seven dice instead of six you can add a new die with a new theme I guess how about that you can actually add you can make dice with more than six sides which is pretty hard to do in real life you can have a seven sided die if you want or eight sided or any any number so you can add dice you can add ideas you can create and generate new ideas so that's cool isn't it I'm really really pleased that this exists I tried to do something like this on my own website and I'm not a very good programmer so what I ended up doing was nowhere near as versatile as this so I'll put a link in the video description I thoroughly recommend you head on over there and support this app and maybe create your own set of dice. If you do create your own set of dice, why don't you tell me about it in the comments? I'd really love to hear. Okay, I'm not super happy with the way that box frame I made looks from the side. A little bit ugly on this side. Let's do something about that today. Okay, so we are going to keep this fairly simple here. I've got some decorative paper. I'm going to cut some strips of it and lay them over these edges here. Partly just to cover this untidy edge but also partly to reinforce this joint here. Somebody did mention in the comments that they wouldn't trust hot glue to hold this thing up. It is actually fairly light, so I think it's probably okay. But I take on board actually that hot glue can shift over time. It can stretch and then over time release. So what we're gonna do is we'll choose one of these lovely patterns, cut some strips and glue them down the edges just to reinforce it. So first thing to do is choose a pattern. Now. <laughs> If you know me, you probably know I quite like colours. So I'm not going to choose one here that's dull, but let's pick out a few candidates that maybe are suitable. Oh, that's not quite nice. That's a bit too busy. That's not bad. Now one with a dark background might be might be better than one with a light background but I haven't got an awful lot of choices here so I think it's going to be one of these here I do like the hexagons I think it isn't that one okay uh, it isn't that one so it's hexagons or diamonds diamonds So, let's cut up some strips of this, and we're just going to paste them on the side with PVA glue. I may just try to go up and around that edge there and actually stick onto the edge of the frame if I can. We'll see, because that will cover up that ugly glue line as well. I mean, that glue line, I think for a hot melt fillet, I think I did okay, but it's never going to be beautiful. We'll measure the size we want. I have to get a new ruler. I've broken off the origin on the centimetre scale, which is a bit annoying. So we want three, four centimeters, and then we'll have a little bit of overlap onto the back. I think we'll do that as well. And then I'll do kind of parcel corners or something at the edges. So yeah, we'll go for four centimeter strips. I'm not gonna to try to do pattern matching here. That is beyond my skill set. using a woodworking PVA adhesive just because it's what I have to hand. It does have the advantage of being extra strong. Cut a piece with a bit of give there like that. We're not going to paste the paper because that will just make it all soggy and waterlogged. We're actually going to paste 
the surface to be glued. Now that might not seem like a brilliant idea, don't worry that bit will wipe off, but applying paper to a glued surface is probably better in this context than applying wet soggy paper to an unglued surface. That's the theory I'm working on right now. We'll see if the practice bears that out. I'm only going to do that side because I can come back and do the fold over in a moment. So there's my strip there. And I'm going to go for that edge first. Push it down into there. Now it's not going to be perfect. But hopefully it's going to look okay. So I'm going to cut here all the way into there. And that will enable me to lay that edge down. We don't need to worry too much about that edge because I'm, when, I'm, when I'm going up this side, I can make that as pretty as I like. But what I do need to do is smooth that down into those little crevices, like so. So my long piece, I'm going to cut it with some spare. And then this is where I need to be a bit more careful with the glue because this is the bit here where I really want some extra adhesion. So I'll make sure we work the glue right into that area there. And I think even though this is just paper, when it's reinforced with PVA, it's going to provide just that little bit of extra strength and resistance to slipping and resistance to the hot melt glue just giving over time. And then we're just going to paint in that bit there as well. Okay. Okay, that's as even a coat as I can probably get. And once again, Going to go in first into that side, push it down, straighten it up along that edge, all the way along. Not easy to do, but we don't want it sticking out, so I'm going to ease that in along there. Okay, now all that remains is just to fold over these little edges here, and I think if I'd been sensible I'd have added another centimetre on there, so I think we might have some interesting fun and games getting these to actually stick down, but we'll see what happens. Not as bad as I thought. Okay, well, there we go. I'm not sure everyone will agree that that's beautiful. In fact, I think I can think of one person who will tell me it's hideous. I won't name names, but if you're watching this, I'm sure you know who you are. So there we go. That's at least, anyway, giving it a little bit of strength and just a tiny little bit more decorative appeal, at least to me, and that's what matters. So there we go. That's what we see after having put that on there. And do you know what? I think that's all right. I quite like it. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.